Welcome back to our international viewers and thank you for joining us once again for our daily English news edition. As usual, I'm Daniel Cook, your host, Monday through Saturday at 6 p.m. The Assembly Speaker Ilir Mehta said today that the politicians need to be careful when making constitutional changes in order to avoid repeating the mistakes made in 2008. Convinced that Albania is still suffering the consequences of the constitutional changes made seven years ago, the Assembly Speaker declared that the politicians need to learn from the mistakes of the past. His comments were in the context of the constitutional changes that are part of the justice reform, for which the SMI has sent its own amendments to the Venice Commission. His statements also come at a time when the same parties who made the constitutional changes in 2008 are discussing the majority bonus system. Ilir Mehta said today that the SMI agenda is clearly defined, and one of the top priorities in the agenda is the decriminalization. An Ora News journalist asked the Assembly Speaker about an idea proposed by Lulzim Basha to create a Senate and reduce the number of MPs. Mehta responded that the SMI will not be involved in the debate that has been started by the Democratic Party. According to Mehta, this is an effort to shift the attention away from the most important reforms of the country. The Assembly Speaker expressed this attitude after a meeting today with the MEP Gianni Pitella. The chairman of the Party for National Development expressed support today for the majority bonus system, despite the fact that many other leaders of the small parties are against it. According to Mr. Shehi, this, uh, this method would allow the party with the most votes to rule the country without the need to create alliances or make bargains. He believes that this system is not harmful to the small parties. Shehi said that the majority bonus system may not be the best solution, but for a country like Albania, such, uh, such a system would bring the trading of MPs between parties to an end. He also asked for a change in the existing electoral formula. As an ally of the Democratic Party and an opposition member, Mr. Shehi supports the Democrats' idea of reducing the number of MPs and creating a Senate with the, uh, within the parliament. The majority bonus system gives the party with the most votes an additional number of MPs as a bonus with the aim of providing governmental stability. A few days ago, the former Prime Minister Sali Berisha claimed that Prime Minister Rama had sent emissaries to talk about changing the electoral system again, just like in 2008. Back then, the small parties rejected the electoral system of the time, a closed list proportional rep uh, representation with the argument that big parties were winning at their expense. Prime Minister Rama spoke today at a conference called The Most Needed Professions, which was organized by the German Chamber of Commerce. Mr. Rama made the admission that 20 to 50 percent of the competitions for projects in the public administration fail because of low education. He said, Yesterday I met a boy who wanted to take a selfie with me. After the photo, he asked me to find him a job. I asked him what he had studied. He answered, Law, just like all Albanians. After sharing this example, Mr. Rama expressed the need to orient the youth toward vocational education. He went on, For 20 years, we have been walking down a road with only one lane, that of higher education. We embedded in the youth and in their parents the illusion that everyone could become a lawyer, an economist, an engineer, and the illusion that people could no longer live by, earning a, uh, by learning a trade. A survey of foreign companies that was made in order to understand what hampers the presence of foreign companies in Albania found that justice, unqualified employees, and property titles were the problems. The Prime Minister added that his government is trying to address these problems with a new approach, saying that the approach of the last 24, uh, 20 years has produced phony degrees and a disbalanced labor market. Lastly, Mr. Rama stated that Albania is following the German model of employment, even though this is a great challenge. The German ambassador also spoke at the conference, criticizing the corruption in the education system. He says that the system has produced far too many lawyers and economists and has ignored the need for skilled tradesmen. Mr. Hoffman stated that Albania needs a clear strategy in order to create an effective professional system. In his words, you need a clear strategy, but there is no need to reinvent a model that has existed for years. According to Mr. Hoffman, there needs to be continuous coordination between the government, the donors, and the private sector.
A day after being released, some of the students who threw eggs at the prime minister yesterday attended their classes at the university. Others did not attend, and a representative of the student group explained that she cannot pay her tuition fees ever since they were increased by the reform in the higher education. The student says that they are planning to expand their movement until it hampers the implementation of the reform. She explained that throwing eggs at the prime minister was a last minute decision, and she claimed that the police used violence when stopping the students. The group has also gained the support of some of the professors. Mark Marku, a former member of the student movement in 1990, condemns the violence of the police. The group also has the support of other students who did not take part in the protest. They may appear to be indifferent, but in reality, they simply don't believe that protesting will make the government withdraw from the reform. Meanwhile, another group of students has staged a similar protest, throwing eggs at the building of the Ministry of Education. The police were called to the scene, but they did not make any arrests. Prime Minister Adi Rama held a meeting today with a member of the European Parliament, Mr. Gianni Pitella. Afterward, they gave a joint press conference in which they said that the EU should open negotiations with Albania in 2016 if the government stays determined to realize its reforms. Mr. Rama mentioned that the draft of the justice reform has been submitted to the Venice Commission. He said, We are waiting for the report of the Venice Commission, which is expected by the end of November or the beginning of December. Based on the progress we have made and the determination of the Albanian government, we believe that next year will be the year that we open the negotiations with the EU. We are determined to maintain progress in the state-building reforms. Mr. Rama went on to say that Albania will certainly play a role in handling the refugee crisis. On his part, Mr. Pitella praised the efforts of Albania and expressed his belief that the EU negotiations will be opened in 2016. He said, it is only fair that after fulfilling the obligations, the process of negotiation will begin for Albania. I hope that Albania will become an EU member by 2019. Albania and the Balkans are giving us a lesson in readiness and are demonstrating great patience, said Mr. Pitella. The 13th edition of the Tirana International Film Festival will be presenting 120 movies from all around the world. The festival director, Agron Domi, says that this is not only an opportunity to exchange cultures, but also to promote Albania. This year's festival was organized with the cooperation of the municipality of Tirana, and it features three distinct categories, the feature film competition, the short film competition, and the Albanian film competition. Open to any filmmaker from around the world, the festival, uh, the festival showcases new cinematic work by established directors with international reputations, as well as work by talented students and young artists. Four juries, comprised of leading film writers, directors, producers, and critics, will evaluate and select the best features and shorts, and the awards will be presented during the closing ceremonies of the final night. Thanks once again for joining us for our English edition. Please be here again at the same time tomorrow at 6 o'clock for more translated news in English. Thanks and good night.